A few weeks ago, my roommate went on a date with a girl that he was super interested in. They decided to spend the evening baking a cake at her apartment. He read the instructions before returning the pan to the oven, poke a hole in the cake with a fork to help it cook evenly. So naturally, he grabbed a fork, poked a hole squarely in the middle of the cake, and then returned the pan to the oven. A few moments passed by before his date sheepishly mentioned, um, aren't you gonna take the fork out? I thought it was supposed to help it cook, he responded. Needless to say, this was an embarrassing moment as he quickly uh, learned of his error and she promptly deduced that this was in fact his first cake baking experience. We can all relate. Each and every one of us has had similarly embarrassing moments. And how do we respond? Well, we try to douse these moments with a fire extinguisher of excuses and distractions, hoping that all will be forgotten. Well, I'd like to change that. And as a fellow college student who has had his fair share of cake baking incidents, I truly believe that if we can change the way that we respond to our errors and shortcomings, we will be happier. Which brings me to my topic, vulnerability. Because if we don't learn to accept who we are right now, we may very well live the rest of our lives as the person the world told us to be. So I'd like to begin explaining first the importance of vulnerability, and then I'll explain two ways in which we can overcome the restraints that society has placed on us. So first, vulnerability. Why is it so important? According to a series of studies performed by Brene Brown, a research professor in the area of social work, vulnerability was the key to those who had feelings of self-confidence and belonging. In Brown's own words, those with self-confidence didn't talk about vulnerability as being comfortable, nor did they talk about it as being excruciating. They simply talked about it as being necessary. The willingness to say, I love you, first. The willingness to do something when there are no guarantees, end quote. So there's a part of you, and you're very familiar with it. It's that part of you that won't talk to the stranger in line because that's awkward. It's the part of you that won't respond to the text right away because you'll come across as desperate. That part of you, incorrectly labeled inhibition, is the only thing that's holding you back from being completely wonderfully powerful, powerfully comfortable with who you really are. So then, how do we overcome the restraints that society has placed on us? I suggest first that we reconsider how we express ourselves. I recently surveyed over 40 students here at BYU, and when asked about what they posted on social media, this is what they said. I only post things I want to remember, said one. Another, it might be sugar-coated a little bit, and my personal favorite, I only post happy things. No one posts about studying in the deep dark corners of the library. I think I'll spare them. Well, the only problem with these statements is that this social sugarcoating, quite frankly, isn't sparing anyone. It's hurting us. It's hurting who we are. It's hurting how we see others. It's hurting who we allow ourselves to be. And we need to stop it. Look, I understand, I really do. Our reputations are on the line. Right? Dating prospects, social groups, um, friends, all hang in the balance. So when the pressure is high and the last thing on your mind is to show vulnerability, I would remind you that there are Helen Kellers and Stephen Hawking's in this life. And these are the people whose very weaknesses are the object of our adoration and respect. So, contradictory as it may seem, there is strength in weakness. There is strength in weakness. Another question that I asked students was if they considered themselves to be perfectionists. The result? Over 50%, half of us. That means that half of us are more worried about how we accomplish something than what it is we're actually accomplishing. We would rather finish 100% of nothing than finish 10% of something. Think about that. And then think about how many of your dreams you aren't accomplishing because you simply feel like you don't have the time, the money, the resources, or the self-confidence to do it perfectly. Truly, as the apostle of the LDS Church, L. Tom Perry, put it, the greatest weakness in most of us is our lack of faith in ourselves. So reject society's demand for perfection and watch your self-confidence grow. It is really, truly 
beautiful. And so I wish to conclude, reminding you all that we would do well to accept and celebrate the weak, vulnerable moments in life. So reject society's demand for perfection and stop the social sugarcoating and enjoy the feelings of peace and happiness that come as a result. And if you only remember one thing from what I've said, remember that there's nothing wrong with baking a fork into a cake every once in a while.